So let's just go ahead and dive into this. Uh, you clicked on the video, you're smart enough to know what you're going to be getting into. Today we're going to be making a piece of art, specifically something like this. This tutorial was really inspired by David Minio. I came across a video of him showing basically this boilerplate script that I'm about to show you. So if you'd like to watch him do it, you're more than welcome to. I'll leave a link in the description. Basically, the artwork and the code itself is inspired by him. And all I've done is make some minor tweaks to it and slow down a little bit so that it's a little bit more digestible for beginners. Um, all right, with the housekeeping out of the way, let's jump into my computer here and get started. You'll need the latest version of Blender. It's a free open source software. Uh, when you open it, it might feel a little overwhelming. You might be faced with something like this. Um, up here at the top, you'll see layout, modeling, sculpting. Just go to the very end and click on scripting. It should bring you to this here. Just to make things a little bit easier, let's go ahead and move this slightly like that. Let's take this and move it like this. Come down here, move it like that. Okay, cool. So now we have a little bit more room. We can see our viewport. We can see where we're gonna write the code over in this right panel. Under that is an info panel. It's blank right now because we haven't done anything. So let's go ahead, click on the cube, hit X and delete. And you can see that we have a little info code here that corresponds to the actions we take in the viewport. So this is, this will come in handy later, as you'll see. But for right now, let's go ahead and get started. We'll need to import a few things into the text editor. So let's hit new. We'll need to import BPY. That's the Blender Python package. We'll also need to import random. That's another package that will help us uh, make the cubes in our photo there sort of randomized in their space. That will make more sense later. And speaking of space, let's go ahead and define a variable called spacing equals, let's go with 2.2. So the reason we're going to use the variable spacing is because we don't want our cubes to generate on top of each other and overlap. Step two, we want to determine the area in which we'll generate our cubes. We'll do this by creating a for loop in ranges. Let's go ahead and do for x in range, and let's do a range of 20. It will indent on the next line. And then let's write another for loop for y in range of 20. To describe what we're doing here, we're basically going to say the area of which we're going to generate our cube is going to be 20 spaces on the x axis and 20 spaces on the y axis. So we're just, we're literally just going to say, whatever comes below or inside this for loop, we wanted to do it in the area of 20 by 20. Now that we know what area we're going to do our build our cube and our spaces, the next thing we want to do is create a location variable. That'll look like location equals x times our variable spacing y times our variable spacing. We're going to type random dot random method times two. So to describe what's going on here, we're defining a variable location that we're going to put in our, in, in our data for our cubes. Um, and we're saying we want the cubes to be in the ranges of 20 by 20 for the x-axis Every cube that we build on the X is going to be multiplied by 2 by 2, 2.2, I should say. And then same thing for the Y. This is how we make sure it's not going to overlap in our location for the cube. And then on our Z axis, this is normally where our Z as in Z would go. We're going to make that random and we're going to multiply it by 2. 
now we're actually going to have our cube show up in the scene. So click on the viewport, hit Shift A, go to Mesh, click on Cube. If you look down here in our info, you will see basically this, this highlighted code here is what is used to create and generate a cube in our scene. So we're going to hit Control C. We're going to go back to our text editor. And inside the four Y and range loop, we're going to hit Paste. And you should see here, in your text editor, you'll see bpyops.mesh.primitivecube add in this location equals zero, zero, zero. We're going to say location, and we're going to replace that with location. And that means that the location that our cube is going to generate is going to be equal to the, the variable we've defined here as x times spacing, y times spacing, z random dot random. We can hit Alt and P. And you can see in our viewport, we've generated a ton of cubes in our 20 by 20 spacing. And they're up and down, which is great. For step three, our Python art wouldn't look very good if it was just gray. So we'll need to make some materials to go along with our cubes here. Inside the for loop, we'll still create a variable called item equals bpy dot context dot object. We're going to use this item variable so we don't have to write out this bp mesh primitive cube over and over again. It's going to make things a little bit easier on us. And in fact, just to separate out what we're doing here, I'm going to just hit enter. Remember, stay inside the for loop. We're going to create an if statement, if random.random, .random, referring to the random.random .random up here in our location variable. And we'll say if it's less than 0 0.2, colon, enter. So this is going to be item.data.materials. Append and then parentheses bpy dot materials dot excuse me bpy dot data dot materials bracket a little apostrophe we'll do materials and let's do excuse me material dot zero zero two all right and then we'll close the bracket and then we'll also close the parenthesis else copy what we just did here go below in the else statement paste it but instead of material dot zero zero two change that to material dot zero zero one all right excellent this is going to be the most blender heavy portion of the, the little tutorial here. So go to your viewport, select a cube, and then come over here. I'll extend this just so it's a little bit easier to see. You're going to go to this little beach ball down here that says material properties. Hit new. It's going to bring this up. I like to hit this preview section here. It's going to bring a little, little circular ball here. And then on the side to the right, you'll see a square, a circle, a cube, hit cube, just so we know what it looks like. And this is material one. So material one is going to be our regular main color. Let's see, we'll do, uh, let's do like a dark purple. And then if you scroll down, you'll see a bunch of other, you know, properties. You can play around with this as much as you want. What I like to do is play with roughness and bring that down a little bit. You'll see it kind of smooths things out. And then I like to also play with metallic, give it sort of a metallic look as well. So that'll be our first material. Hit this plus sign over here, hit new. That's material two. So this is our accent color, same, same idea. So let's see what goes well with purple. Maybe like a bright blue type or maybe a yellow. Let's just see what that's like. We'll try to match the roughness, bring it down. OK, great. So in our code here, if to move it back, 
what we're going to say is any item that's less than the random that meets the criteria, it's going to be this yellow color. Everything else should be purple. Let's make, that, make sure that works. So with the cube still selected, just hit A and delete it all. Now we have nothing in our scene here. And we're going to test to make sure that this works. Alt P. And it looks exactly like we had it. In order to make sure if the materials have been applied, let's go to this beach ball in the middle here. And it has. This is what it looks like. Kind of cool. I, I actually like it, but you can tweak around with this as much as you want. Maybe you can change the random settings here in your if statement. You can also change the range in your for loops. So awesome, we, we have our thing here. But if we go to our rendered settings, you can see it still doesn't look very good. We're going to get away from the scripting here, and we're just going to quickly um, set up a scene. On the side here, go to the world, bring this down to zero. And then in the viewport, hit Shift A. I like to bring in a plane. actually. I'll bring it back to, to this setting, the beach ball in the middle. Hit G and Z so you can lift the plane up. Hit S and then drag your mouse to scale it up. What I like to do and then hit R, X. We'll do, we'll rotate it. It's kind of like this. Hit R again, hit Z, and rotate it so it's kind of like that. That might be a little bit too big, but we'll see. Come back to the beach ball down and make another material. This time in the surface, it'll give you a list of different material properties. I like to hit emission. So what emission does is if we go to our viewport setting, it now has become this like glowing in the sky plane. In order for this to work though, you need to come to your camera render properties and switch from EV to cycles. And you can see it acts as a light for our render scene. Hit shift A, come to camera, look at your scene here somehow, maybe like this, hit control alt zero, this will snap your camera into place, but we don't want our light in the scene. So what I like to do is hit the camera button down here on the side, type orthographic, pull this out in the orthographic scale. In this orange box here, you see the rotations and the location numbers. I like to make sure that the Y is set at zero, so it's flat. X is going to be your pitch up and down, and Y is going to be your left to right. So with the X, I want to make sure that it's all just squares. And I want to do this, and I kind of want to do that. And I want to give it like a... There's lots of cubes there, so maybe I'll do this. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's uh, just tweak it a little bit more maybe what i gotta do is zoom in a bit zoom in there we go and i think that looks good so if you like that i usually go to color management under the where it was in cycles change that to gpu you really don't need 4,000 samples i would just do like 2,000. Um, under color management for the look I would do high contrast, gives it a bit more uh, pop. And then you'll see like a printer output properties. If you hit this folder, a window will pop up that allows you to select where you want it on your computer. Under the render tab, hit render image. Okay, great, yeah, you can see it's rendering. If I pull out a bit, um, it'll render. Once all the samples are done, it says render complete. You can save it by hitting this folder up here. Um, you can also do image and save as when it's done. And you'll have a cool little image here. Um, you can play around with that lighting a bit. 
Um, but you basically know the script to create this cool little pattern design. Great, we're done. So if you want to see more tutorials like this, be sure to let me know. Liking, commenting, subscribing, anything really helps the channel. Um, and until next time, be sure to learn, apply, and thrive. Bye.